Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and today I'm going to go over basically my own version of a step-by-step -step guide to incubating eggs, hatching specifically chicken eggs today. There's, I think, feel, I really feel like some people think that it's too complicated or it's hard or they don't have time to mess with it and they just buy chicks at the store. But incubating your own eggs is very, very, very simple. And hopefully after today, you'll give it a shot if you're wanting some chickens on your property. But before we get too far into it, I want to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by Xmark Mowers, the makers of professional mowing equipment. Guys, we've had this Xmark on our farm for three seasons now. And other than an oil change or two and a blade change or two, this thing right here has kept my wife in the mowing business around here. She does most of the mowing here, not all of it, but uh, I love that Xmark mower. Stepping up to that commercial grade style mower made a huge difference for us in cutting down that mowing time and making our yard and grandma's yard and a few other yards look really good. So let's get into this. Today, we're gonna do this a little bit different. As you can see, we've already started hatching a few chicks and uh, hopefully the rest of these start to hatch real soon. So uh, let's go over my step-by-step -step guide on how to incubate your own chickens. So the first thing we need to talk about is incubators. And there, it's just like anything else. You can get something really, really cheap that will work, or you can spend a lot of money that you don't need to, honestly. Uh, years ago, I used to hatch hundreds and hundreds of chicks. I'd go to poultry auctions and buy hatching eggs. I had two big GQF cabinet style incubators and a hatcher and uh, basically hatched out chicks as a side hustle, part-time job on the side to sell chicks on Craigslist and Facebook and all the places just to kind of help support my family and get other people chickens for their farms. I don't have those big incubators anymore, mostly because I'm not going to be hatching out dozens and dozens. Every year we hatch out a few chicks, we hatch out a few ducks and things, but specifically, why, first off, why would you want why would anyone want to hatch out their own eggs? Well, for me personally, I feel like there's a couple good reasons if I can get this fly away from me. The main thing is there's only certain number or certain, you're limited on the types and species that you can get in your area. You can buy chicks from a hatchery online. Of course, you can get tons of different options there. But if you're gonna to try to shop local or not have them shipped through the mail, you're kind of limited when your farm stores have chicks in the spring you get what they have to offer. Yes, you can order from hatcheries and get whatever you want, but you guys ever deal with flies? They make me angry. Um, if you're gonna hatch out your own eggs, there's so many more possibilities. Just think about, I want you guys to look it up on, on eBay. Go to eBay and search hatching eggs, and you will be blown away at the number of different breeds of chickens that you can buy and hatch out. Incubating eggs is fun. It's a great experience for kids. I love, I've always loved to get my kids involved in this stuff. Um, a lot of school teachers do it as a school project to teach kids basically how life forms from an egg into a chicken. Now, we still don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. I'm gonna say the chicken, but that's just me. Anyways, if you wanna hatch out chicks for yourself, um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on an incubator. Let me show you these three that I've got here. So the first one is the Little Giant Incubator. This is probably the most common incubator sold in farm stores around the country. It's styrofoam. It's very basic, very simple. It's got a little heater and a fan and a little thermostat. This one does have an egg turner in it. To me, that's very important. You do wanna get a incubator with an egg turner because these eggs have to be turned three to five times a day. So unless you wanna come out here and open up your incubator three to five times a day, which I do not want to do, get you an egg turner. This one is the Hatchmate. I haven't actually used this yet, but I know a lot of farms that do, and uh, this was a gift from, from a friend of mine. So it's got a uh, an, an egg turner in it. It doesn't hold near as many eggs, but you can set it up for different sizes of eggs. It's pretty basic, pretty simple, but if you just want to hatch out you know, eight or 10, maybe 12 smaller chicken eggs. This would work perfect. This year we've been using this Nature Right 360. 
nurture right not nature right we've been using this nurture right 360 i bought this on amazon for houston for christmas this this past year and we've hatched out ducks chickens we did our um one peafowl that hatched out and one goose so we've hatched a lot of stuff in this thing it's uh it works really really well and i think this one on amazon's like 100 120 dollars i'm not sure on the price of those but they're not expensive you can pick one of these up just about anywhere for 50 60 bucks and you may have to pay another 20 or 30 for the egg turner uh they these all three have egg turners and as i said earlier i think the egg turner is very important because your goal is to keep the right temperature and the right humidity at all times you don't want to open that incubator up so if you've got to open it three or four times five times a day to turn those eggs by hand it's easy to forget and you're messing with that temperature and uh, humidity cycle so when you're hatching chicks chickens specifically they have a 21 day incubation period so you're going to start your eggs in your incubator depending on which style you have um, if it if the egg will stand up in there like the little giant the eggs, eggs actually stand up these two they lay on their side if they stand up put the pointed end down so that air bubble goes to the top we've had really good success with these that lay on their side and the eggs just get rolled much like a mother hen would do i know she doesn't lay her eggs vertically in her nest they're just in there and every time she moves she moves them around so we're just trying to mimic nature and what mama hen would do but when you start your eggs they're going to take 21 days so on day one through 18 you're going to want a temperature of like 100.5 and humidity is going to be in that 50 to 55 percent range now most well all of these have digital readouts you can buy a little small digital thermometer hydrometer to set in your incubator if it doesn't have one but that's very important you need to stay very very close to that temperature and humidity for the first 18 days now seven to ten days in you're going to want to candle your eggs and basically what that means is you're going to take an egg and look inside of it to see if that egg's fertile so i shot a few clips back except the first seven to ten days i'll show you those in a couple minutes but you can do it with a flashlight you can take a flashlight and hold it basically just hold your egg and put the flashlight underneath and it'll light up you're going to want to do this at night or in a dark room and you'll be able to see inside that egg and see and within seven to ten days there will be veins forming and you won't be able to see a chick in there yet there may be a very small embryo but when you can start to see those veins and um, a little bit of uh, a chick forming you'll know that egg's fertile if it's just just looks like crystal clear you can't really see much in there except maybe a little bit of a dark spot where the yolk might be that egg's not fertile you're not going to want to incubate infertile eggs for 21 days because they will go bad and they will explode so this is an egg that did not develop at all you can see it's almost just you can see through it and um, nothing but a yolk there see that's nothing but a yolk and here's one that is developing you can see it's not fully developed yet there's something growing in that small side of the egg and there's an air sac a little bit of dead space but there's definitely a chick forming in this egg so after you've candled your eggs in that seven to ten day mark you're just going to keep them in the incubator keep it keep that temperature right keep your humidity right you're probably going to have to add water every two three four days depending on what the humidity is in your area um, just make sure that humidity level doesn't plummet if you forget to add water you got to think about this living creature that's inside this porous egg and if that humidity drops too low it, it's really bad for that embryo inside there even though it's inside of an egg eggshells are porous and they need moisture or you know things can go bad it's just like a human baby it's got to stay inside that that um, embryo sac i'm not a i'm not a doctor but anyways if it was outside the mama's body it's not going to survive very long 
So after you've candled your eggs at that seven to 10 day mark, you're just gonna let them set until day 18. Day 18 is very important on chicks. That's when you're gonna to wanna to remove your egg turner and just lay the eggs flat in there. Um, some, some incubators, you can just turn the egg turner off. Some of you actually have to remove it, but you can candle them one more time just to see what's going on inside there because sometimes over that second week, you will lose a few more chicks. And if, you, if you've lost some along the way, you wanna get rid of those eggs, get them out of the incubator because you don't want a rotten egg to explode and ruin your whole batch and make your, you know, your laundry room or your extra bedroom or your shop or whatever smell like rotten eggs. So day 18, turn the turner off. You're gonna lay them on their side, candle them one more time, remove any that are bad, and then you're gonna raise that humidity. So depending on your style of incubator, this, this one here has an extra water slot where you pour water into, um, where with like the little giant, it just has a one water reservoir at the bottom. You can take like a sponge or a washcloth and get it wet and set it in there and that'll help raise that humidity. And you're gonna wanna get that humidity up to like 75 to 80%, something like that. I actually think this one's running about 90% right now, but that's because it's so darn humid in Oklahoma. Oh, and the humidity is killer. We haven't really done anything with them since like that whatever seven, seven to 10 days in when we did that first initial candling. And uh, we've still got a pretty good number of eggs for little Brooks. She should have some, a good number of chicks hatch out, but we will uh, see what we get. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna candle them one more time. We got, still got a dozen eggs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Still got a dozen eggs. So we'll see, keep our fingers crossed. We may get 12 chicks to hatch. Now at this stage, by now, uh, there, it should just be pretty much a dark egg. We shouldn't be able to see much light through them at all because there is a chick that's just about completely fully developed and that is a completely dark egg right there. That one's good. All right, this one I'm a little concerned about. So can see where it's dark on the left, but there's a lot of airspace in there. So that tells me that chick, something happened between the first and second candling it. Who knows it, it didn't fully develop. So you can see that is no good right there compared to one that's fully developed. You see no light at all. All right, so we candled all 12 of our remaining eggs and we had three that didn't make it. So what we're gonna do now is take our, our egg turner off and just spread these out evenly. And like I said, this is day 18, so we should start pipping some babies in about two days. But at day 18, we're just gonna stop the turner cover back on so then from day 18 to day 21 you're just gonna let them sit on their side you don't have to rotate them or anything day 21 you'll start to see the chicks do what they call pip you'll just see one little spot where their beak starts pipping the side the inside of that shell and then it'll pop open and it may stay like that for several hours it may stay like that overnight sometimes that chick is is able to breathe and it's building up enough energy to push out of that shell. The one thing that's very important, do not, do not, do not open your incubator and try to help those chicks out of the eggs because you can stress out the chick. Basically that chick is absorbing the egg yolk and that's what's gonna sustain them for up to about three days is they absorb that egg yolk after they've pipped a lot of times. So it may take them sometimes a chick a full day to actually hatch out of the egg but resist that urge to open up the incubator and uh, crack the shell and help him out because you can actually damage that baby chick i'm going to open this up in a minute i don't know if you guys can see it but uh there <laughs> there's two chicks that have already hatched i'm gonna get them put in a brooder one of them's still toting around a piece of the shell because the i don't know what it's called the liner inside the shell has stuck to its back but they're dried off, they're ready to come out of the incubator. So after day 21, you might notice that 
some of your chicks haven't pipped, some of them haven't hatched yet. It kind of depends on how well you did in the incubation process. If you kept it super consistent, they should hatch pretty close to the same time. But as you can see, I've got two chicks that have hatched already. And what is there? Two, four, six, seven eggs that haven't hatched yet. So a couple of them are starting to pip, but uh, haven't hatched but you'll know that it's okay to take them out of the incubator once those chicks are dried off. Like I said, once they hatch, they've got that yolk that they've um, absorbed to survive. That's why, that's, that's why we're able to ship chicks. That's why hatcheries can ship them in the mail. They'll live for about 36 hours without food or water. So don't be in a rush to open the incubator and get them out. Let them get fully dried off. And then we're gonna move them to an incubator. I'm sorry, then we're gonna move them to a, a, a brooder. So I'm gonna grab these two chicks and uh, take them to my brooder and show you what we got going on there. Hey, you two. Hey, where are you going? See, this one's still pulling around the shell. It's got part of that egg liner tuck, <laughs> stuck to its back. That's kind of funny. I've never, it's never really seen one stay stuck to the shell. So let's get these guys out of here. Probably the only way I'm gonna be able to get that off of there is to wet it down. It's kind of dried on there and I'm afraid if I try to peel it off right now, we're gonna end up peeling feathers. It'd be like waxing somebody's hair on their arm or leg, you know? I don't, I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna leave it for now and then I'll probably wet it down in a little bit and see if we can get that to come on off of there. So here's my brooder set up. You can see it's just a Rubbermaid tub with a heat lamp suspended over the top. And you're gonna want your temperature down here at your wood shavings or whatever bedding you use. You can use a lot of different things. Some people just use newspaper for the first few days. But you're gonna want that temperature to be about 90 to 95 degrees. Then the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with your new baby chicks is to just dip their beaks in the water. I know it sounds kind of harsh, but you wanna teach them where the water is. And I've just got a little small chick water and a chick feeder. Came from Premier One Supplies. And as we add chicks to this, we'll just dip their beak in there and uh, they'll, they'll know where their water's at. Right, little chicky. Just gonna dip their beaks in the water. Okay, there, they're already finding the food. Yeah, so they've got plenty of food and water. Now when it comes to your brooder, you're gonna want a space set up where they can go get directly under the heat and some area where they can get away from the heat. They're just like us. Sometimes they're hot, sometimes they're cool. They need to be able to move in and out, especially if you've got 12, 15, 20 chicks under here. You'll notice they'll clump up together sometimes. That means they're cold. And if they're all spread out and none of them are under the light, that means that it's too hot in there. So they'll be able to tell you whether it's too hot or too cold. Now, once all of your chicks have hatched or you believe they've all hatched, it can take up to about 23 days sometimes. They should start hatching at 21. Some of them take a little longer, as you can see here. We'll wait, we'll give them a couple extra days, wait for them to hatch. But once your chicks are moved into the brooder, like I said, you're gonna want it 90, 95 degrees, something like that. And very safe, protected, away from a draft and stuff. Basically, you're just gonna wanna decrease that temperature a little bit at a time after about two weeks. So I don't do a whole lot for the first couple weeks. After that, they start growing a few feathers. It could take them four to six weeks to be fully feathered out. So you wanna make sure that they have plenty of heat, plenty of food and water, and uh, chicks will do fine. They're really not difficult at all. Once you uh, get them incubated out, food, water, heat lamp, safety. Don't just throw them outside in a coop and keep, keep chicks that are the same size together. If you put two or three you know, chicks that are a few days old, then with some that are a few weeks old, they're gonna get picked on. There's a uh, pecking order there and you may lose some. So keep chicks at the same age together. And uh, it's pretty much that simple. There's not a lot to it. So I uh, hope this helps somebody out. I know a lot of people have questions, questions on incubating eggs, hatching eggs. Just remember, there's a ton of information on the internet. I learned everything about hatching, everything about chickens years ago, like probably 10 or 12 years ago on a, a website and a forum called Backyard Chickens. But not just a plug for them. There's just a world of information on the internet when it comes to incubating anything in a shell. Just remember chickens are 21 days. A lot of other birds are different. You know, waterfowl, ducks, geese, um, turkeys, a lot of other things are like 28 days. 
So just remember, do your research, figure out how many days for the incubation period for the type of bird you're incubating and uh, get after it. It's so much fun. I absolutely love incubating chicks and birds. You've seen how much excitement Houston's got out of that Christmas present. I feel like that incubator right there was a, the perfect Christmas present for a nine year old kid to, to learn about life, to learn about how things happen. And you know, just there's so much that kids don't get in this world these days. But anyways, guys, I guess that's gonna wrap it up for me today. Don't forget, huge thank you to Xmark Mowers for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out the link in the description box down below, go to, or you can go to xmark.com slash backyard for tons of other outdoor backyard style content, lots of outdoor cooking. My buddy Mike from Outdoors with the Morgans posts a lot of stuff on there for him. And uh, like I said, huge thank you to Xmark for sponsoring today's video. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.